Hi, welcome to Stars Museums. I'm Mr. Dyer, and today we're going to be taking a look at something that's been used throughout human history that goes so far back, like there's no uh, definitive example of when it was first started or used. Okay, so it's just, if we were able to make tools to make other things such as clothing and useful articles, it goes that far back, okay? And uh, that's what this is about, so stay with me. We'll be right back. Hi, so welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I cover artifacts. I and mean, we take a look at the artifacts, we discuss them, um, and if at all possible, if they're in good enough shape, we even use them and demonstrate them being used so that you get an appreciation for our history. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I really didn't like history until I had someone come into my classroom and they showed me tangible things. And then after that, I just fell in love with it. I love material culture and how we as humans have used our ingenuity and technology uh, to build on itself to make things better and more user friendly for us. So that's what this is about. Now check out my other videos. We have a ton of American Civil War videos. We have a ton of early American camp craft videos. No, I am not starting a new living history impression. Uh, I'm dressed like this because it's like 95 degrees here in Ohio with a tremendous amount of humidity and I'm bald. Bald man, if I don't cover up my head, my sweat just runs down and it's kind of gross, things like that. Won't go into it. But that's why I'm dressed like this. It's just too hot. We're going to take a look at something called the poke sack. Now, the poke sack is just a sack for you to put things in. And they're usually pretty small. They come in different sizes and different materials, but they all have and share the same purpose, and that is to carry articles. In the American Civil War, which is the period I tend to cover, along with early camp craft, uh, the books talks about poke sacks. One of the most famous books that, if you're a Civil War historian, you might have read or you probably read or heard about, is Hardtack and Coffee John Billings. He talks about poke sacks being used quite a bit. Now, the reason is because your haversack, the bag that the soldiers would carry on their side, that would be kind of like their mobile kitchen, if you will. That's where they stored all their food. And to do that uh, safely so you don't have a bunch of grease and your coffee is not mixed with everything else and it just gets too gross, they would have sacks like this, poke sacks. And that's where they would separate their food. So you might have one bag that's your beans, one bag would have your coffee, another bag might have your oats or cornmeal. Uh, it just kind of depends on your own personal taste. Generally speaking, you would also put your meat, like a salt pork or salt beef, in a bag as well just to keep it separated and that grease and nastiness and flies and other bugs uh, from your other food. So uh, that's an example of the American Civil War. Kephart also talks about the bags being used in his book you know, because when you're going out on a scout or something like that you also carry food with you and what's the easiest way to do that? You have a little bag. This is before Ziploc bags, this is before freezer bags, this is before of uh, vacuum seal bags, you know, our contemporary uses. They're all the same purpose, just historically speaking, they're made differently and used a little bit differently. And the foods themselves were also prepared differently because of that. If you have a Ziploc bag, it's going to be airtight. You're not going to have to worry about the bugs so much. Now, historically speaking, they didn't have plastics to make things airtight, but they had other materials to try to keep them as airtight as humanly possible. One of those examples, the Christian Commission would make bags like this, and it was just a tarred cloth bag on the outside to keep it kind of waterproof, and on the inside, it was uh, lined with a muslin. Or they could be all just one material. Another example is oiled silk. Now, oiled silk, if you go back, literally was a silk bag that was impregnated with oil. Now, oil silk bags were really useful for keeping your tobacco, a lot of your historical tobacco bags were made out of oil silk, or if you wanted some things uh, to keep separated that you want to make sure it was dry, would be like your sugar so it doesn't just melt out or get all sticky, you have an oil silk bag for that. Now for tobacco, you're not going to be worried so much about the oil bothering you, you're just going to smoke it. But if you're concerning with food, 
uh, John Billings talks about those oil soaked bags also being lined on the inside so that you would have a waterproof covering on the outside. On the inside, you would have just a, a cotton or muslin uh, type material. Possibly even be canvas. So why do I have all these different bags here? Kind of already explained that, but I like to use the, uh, the, the bags also to separate gear. For example, in this particular bag, I use this as my utensil bag. So as my fork, my knife, my spoon, also has my spices that I like to keep in uh, like wooden treenware containers that I've made. Now not too many of them, just your basic spices, salt, pepper, maybe some cinnamon, maybe some thyme, um, things like that. And it, since they're wooden, they're not going to break. I also make a bag that I keep my plates in because plates can get rather greasy, especially historical plates. We're not talking about stainless steel. Stainless steel is something you don't really have to worry about that so much. But when you're talking about tinware, where you need to keep oil to keep the rust off of it, uh, it does get kind of greasy and kind of nasty. So having a separate bag for that just makes sense. And in fact, your haversacks would often have uh, two bags. One bag um, that you could be removed from the haversack and another bag Additionally, and in all truthfulness, when you take your, uh, your food stuff and you put that in your haversack, the food stuff themselves are going to take up the entire year. You may take your plate, which is going to put in your uh, knapsack. When we're talking about early camp craft, it's a little bit different. You're not going out for long periods of time on a march or things like that, so your plate may be in your haversack. And in fact, the, uh, the haversack, the M, the Spanish-American War haversacks in 1898, a few years before the different models, which really only differ in size, they had a special place in the haversack for your plates, specifically for your plates. So there you have it. That's what we have when we're talking about a poke sack. I would suggest that you yourself make them. They're really cheap and easy. You can buy them. But having a poke sack makes your kit more authentic, helps you stay organized. Even the Boy Scout Patrol Manual Leader's manual in the 18 or 1920s gave examples of how scouts could make these to keep their knapsacks and their haversacks more organized. Um, you know, our contemporary campers we use dry sacks. Well, back then they had poke sacks and they had other type of sacks, uh, maybe made from an oil cloth, which is really just a painted cloth to keep most of the moisture out. Is it waterproof? No, it's water resistant. Uh, historically speaking, this would be in your kit. I would suggest that you make them, get creative with them. You can literally make them out of any material. You can take an old shirt that you have, cut it, uh, and make yourself some poke sacks. I hope that was useful. hope it was informative. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any comments, tell me, you know, what would you keep in your poke sacks, if nothing else? Uh, how would you organize it? Do you use sacks to organize your camping kit? Let me know. And uh, let's share some ideas and let's get a little bit more organized together. I hope you have a wonderful week. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like the video, and take care.